Hello folks and thank you once again for joining with me for our midweek service for this last midweek service during Advent Advent finishes of course in two days time on Christmas Eve but before we get there I want to think about the last of the four major themes of Advent for us to reflect upon and it seems so close to Christmas that it's it's right that we do so as we think of love love divine and I want to read you two passages from Luke's Gospel and again one of them is the Christmas story which I'll finish with uh, reading from the, the scriptures during Advent but the first one perhaps is a slightly different take for Christmas it's the story from Luke's Gospel chapter 19 and I read the first 10 verses it's the story of Jesus and the tax collector Zacchaeus so hear God speak to us in these words Jesus went on into Jericho and was passing through there was a chief tax collector there named Zacchaeus who was rich he was trying to see who Jesus was but he was a little man and could not see Jesus because of the crowd so he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus who was going to pass that way when Jesus came to the place he looked up and said to Zacchaeus hurry down Zacchaeus because I must stay in your house today Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed him with great joy all the people who saw it started grumbling this man has gone to a guest in the home of a sinner Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord listen sir I will give half my belongings to the poor and if I have cheated anyone I will pay him back four times as much Jesus said to him salvation has come to this house today for this man also is a descendant of David the son of man came to seek and to save the lost and we hear the story in Luke of the birth of Jesus Luke chapter 2 at that time the Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire when the first census took place Quirinius was the governor of Syria everyone then went to register himself each to his own town Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea the birthplace of King David Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David he went to register with Mary who was promised in marriage to him she was pregnant and while they were in Bethlehem the time came for her to have her baby she gave birth to her first son wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger there was no room for them to stay in the inn there were some shepherds at that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone over them and they were terribly afraid but the angel said to them don't be afraid I'm here with good news for you which will bring great joy to all the people this very day in David's town your Saviour was born Christ the Lord and this is what will prove it to you you will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger suddenly a great army of heavenly heavens angels appeared with the angels singing praises to God glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased when the angels went away from them back into heaven the shepherds said to one another let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger when the shepherds saw him they told him what the angel had said to about the child all who heard it were amazed at what the, the shepherds said Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them the shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen it had just been as the angel had told them Amen and thanks be to God 
for his word. I just love that story of the angels visiting the shepherds. I love it because the shepherds are not the most upright people, not the most possibly religious people. They're ordinary folk like you and me, working away when they're first to be told that the Saviour has come. And they were told to go and see the Saviour. And it's it's a touching story, but while I'm thinking of that, and it fills me with, with joy in my heart, the thinking of that, that scene, it's maybe not a scene that we think very much about Christmas, the story of Zechariah, uh, Zacchaeus, the tax collector. I read that one partly because, again, that story fills me with hope. Because it shows God's love for us. Here he was, and I'm not a tall man. I can imagine myself being Zacchaeus hiked in amongst a group of six feet tall folk. I can't see. When I conduct a wedding in Money Must Church, I have to stand on the two steps above the chancel and have the bride and groom stand at the lower steps so that people can see me uh, and hear me so that the, fam the, the, the bride and groom are not blocking me. Poor Zacchaeus, he heard about Jesus, he wanted to see him. You can just imagine him trying to get through the clouds to the front and nobody's going to help him, they'll lock arms, you're not getting there. So he runs and he climbs a tree so he can just see Jesus. He just wanted to see Jesus. You know, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And tax collectors, they weren't collecting taxes for the Jewish authorities. They worked for the Roman authorities, the occupying forces. You can imagine just what it would have been like with collaborators in the time of any war. They would have been seen as collaborators. And worse than that, they were cheating their own people. Because very often the tax collectors, maybe let's say they had to gather five pounds they would take five pounds for the Romans, but they'd take a pound or two for themselves and put it in their own back pocket so that they had a good life. They cheated people using the power that the Romans gave them. Jesus came along the street and he knew Zacchaeus was there. And he looked up and full of compassion, he changed his life. Because you see, that to me is a Christmas story. Jesus came to earth, Emmanuel, God with us. He came to us as we are. He came to us as flawed and failed and mistaken people carrying a burden of sin on our, ourselves. He came to heaven for you and for me, people like that. Not some picture perfect version of us, not for some holier than thou us, he came for us to us sorry he came to earth for us as we are because he loves us and if that doesn't fill your hearts with hope and joy and light this Christmas and for eternity nothing will he loves you as you he loves me as me and sure he wants us all to try to be better parts of ourselves but he doesn't want us to be all made up before we can come to him. He sees us as we are. He knows each of us intimately, all our flaws, our failings, and yes, our successes. That's love. That's the love divine that came. Love came down at Christmas. Love, all oh lovely. Love came down at Christmas. Love for you and for me so that he could live his life and die his death and pay the penalty for our faults and feelings which he accepted as he accepted us. And what does he want in return? Yes, for us to try better, but more, for us to love him more. Do we receive Christ this Christmas? 
not a baby in a manger that we can worship in church, that we can sing some well-known carols, but we receive him forever in our hearts. Shall we pray? God, your love is supernatural. It's beyond our comprehension. We don't fully understand it, but we know that you came down in love for us. And in love, you lived your life. You taught us how we should live. And you died your death. It was our sins that nailed your hands to the cross. It was our sins that led you there. And we lay them now at the foot of your cross, knowing that you forgive us because you love us. Lord, there are times in the darkness of night or in the darkness of sadness or hurt or when we have done something that we feel is horrible, that we think, how can you love us? But it's in these times you love us more. It's in these times that you want to put your arms around us and hug us and care for us and to lift us from the darkness and to give us another chance. Like Zacchaeus, who lived perhaps not the most perfect life, but his life was changed as you reached your hand out to that tree and said, come down, I'm going to have my tea with you. Come into us, dwell with us, or come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. So Lord, as this Advent season comes to a close and we get nearer to celebrating Christmas, fill our hearts with the Advent journey of hope, of peace, of joy and of love. And may we share these with others. For we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, I'm going to have a wee break. I'm going to have a couple of weeks off from midweek services. I won't probably start until the second or third week in January. Uh, I'm needing a wee rest after all of the Christmas exertions. It's an age thing, I think. Never mind. So I will pick up the, the, the midweek services sometime in January. Just look, look for it. I'll give plenty warning. But thank you for having joined with me for the course of this last three or four months as we've been doing the midweek services and especially over Advent. I do hope that you have a wonderful Christmas when it comes and that you may experience the joy, the peace and wonder that is the coming of our Saviour and as we prepare all ourselves for his coming again. So now, go in peace and may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and always. Amen. Take care of yourself and take care of others. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.